I hope y'all are doing well today. I'm sorry y'all, it's hot. It's so hot in here. Anyways, today um, we're gonna be doing a pancake wreath. So someone requested to do a pancake wreath and honestly, it's been quite a while since we did one. So I thought it would be fun to do that. So that's what we're gonna do. The great thing about a pancake wreath is you really only need one mesh and you're going to be using you're going to be using the Dollar Tree frame right so the reason you're using the Dollar Tree frame is because you see how flat this frame is and that's what you need when you're doing a pancake wreath so the whole point of pancake wreath is for it to fit in between a door and a screen door so we're going to use this base to do it all right all righty so how are y'all doing so i cut these at um, 20 inches and this is the yellow and white mesh so we got this brand new ribbon in and i am obsessed with it look at it Oh my gosh, I love it so much. It's lemons. I love lemons. And I think lemons kind of is one of those really good ones that can go a long time. And we have this awesome sign. And it has a lot of the same elements in it. So it has the little gingham on the truck and the little guy. So this works out really well. And then I have, hello, hello. It's not bees, it's uh, lemons. But kind of looks like it. And then we have black and white. The way that this one works, you are, well, welcome. We're so glad you're here. We actually have a group live tonight. The way this one works is you're going to put 12 ties on this, and then we're gonna take these 12 pieces that we cut and we're going to make them flat so that they kind of create this almost like a fan. So, you know, this was created by um, Sincerely Creative Mom. We love Melly Mel. Because where she lives, you know, it's a big thing. It's the whole, there's the sign. It's the whole, everybody has a screen door. And so this is like very cool for where she is. Not very many people down here have screen doors, but some do. And it's cute anyways, doesn't really matter. You know I like things to match. <laughs> All right, so I'm actually gonna start my ties on the top. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go at every cross mark, okay? Like this. Now I take that back. We're going to start on the bottom and we're going to do it every cross mark. And I'll twist it on and then twist one of the ties around. Twist it again. There. So you could either do on every cross mark on the top or you could do it on the bottom. It's going to come out the same either way. 110 degrees already. That's hot. Y'all, that's just too hot. All right. So the way we're going to do the top is we're going to put our tie in between where these ties are. All right. So it's kind of spaced out. What I like about this is you don't have to use as many supplies, right? You really only need the one mesh. I mean, you can do more, but you don't have to. So, it's just a very economical project. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. 
Hello, hello. doing fine she's just a little tired today so does she look lemons in the kitchen is like amazing right I love lemons in the kitchen okay so up top I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna twist it and I want it to be pretty tight so it won't move and I want the tie to rest on this upper bar That's just a personal preference. You could have it rest in the middle or at the bottom like this. It's not gonna make a huge difference. You can also put it in the middle. And I'm really tightening this as we go. So see, it's, it's not gonna move. So this is easy to remember too. It's 12, 12, 12. 12 ties. 12 mesh, 12 ribbon. I like that. I know, this is jute mesh. So this is my favorite mesh. And for those who are just starting out, this is a really good mesh because it's easier to work with. And it's going to cover really well. So if you look at it, right, you can see through it, but not like you can with deco mesh. Let's see, do I have any deco mesh over here? Yeah. Let's, okay, here we go. Right, so look here. You see how you can see through the deco mesh? Look at that. See how you can just see right through it? You can see my hand. You can see everything, right? With this, not nearly as much. See, when I put my hand back here, you couldn't like tell the details, right? So doing a project like this, this is really a perfect mesh for it, just because it's really gonna cover really well. Yeah, it doesn't, really fray nearly as much although I still like to tuck it just a tad you're gonna do your ruffle exactly the same so go straight up the center tuck that little edge under this is where it's different you're gonna place it down one important thing is you want to do the bottom layer first and then you're gonna do the top layer you're gonna take your mesh and you're going to spread it out so that it will lay flat. That's the whole point, okay? You might have to put your hands under and kind of push the mesh up so that it'll lay flatter. Now you can see what I mean. You see how flat that is? That's why it will fit in a storm door. Let me push these up. I'm gonna get them in my way. All right, let's try it with the tool. Okay. So we just pull it out, tuck just a tiny little bit, place it in the center. Now you're gonna see how much easier it is to ruffle this kind of mesh than it is the deco mesh. You can really do this with one hand if you have something you could put steady over here. Okay, once I get it in, I can pull it out, place it down. It looks like pancakes, which is why she named it Pancake Wreath, I think. I don't know, honestly, I haven't asked her. I didn't even think to ask her that, but yeah. You're right, it does look like pancakes. Let's move that. <laughs> it's just, it's just one being my way. Now you see the way this works. You see how they 
start to kind of lay on top of each other. The mesh is cut at 20 inches. See how they kind of just like flop over each other? Then when we go to the top, it's also going to come over and that's how you cover the frame. The other different thing is the way you do your tails, right? So again, I fold them in half. I still have them 12 inches. Y'all know that's just my favorite measurement. <laughs> and I'm gonna put it in, tie it down. I'm gonna tie, you know, good three or four times. Trim it off. I'm just gonna tuck it under and I want my ribbons to pull out like this, okay? So remember, everything's gonna be kind of flat. So you shouldn't have a big problem keeping your ribbons pulled out like you do with the other way we do ruffles because nothing is going to be kind of pushing it. Yeah, I will. Let me get this on and I will hold it up for you. Okay. Oh no, it's a summer thing. Is it a summer thing? Okay. There we go. So I'm gonna spread them out so I can see all of my ribbons. If you're having trouble where it's trying to move and whatnot, kind of pull at it and separate it within that tie. Remember, it has wire, so you can use that wire to your advantage, like that. Okay, so this is the ribbon. You see that it has the little gingham truck with the little lemons in it. like uh, UPS or we use um, the post office and UPS that's <laughs> that's who we use for shipping <clears throat> okay so tuck it under right up the center I have kind of a love-hate relationship with all of my shippers. They're, they're either really great or they're really not. And we never know what day it's going to be what. <laughs> That's frustrating, but it's the way it is these days. So you see how we just kind of spread it out like a fan and just kind of push it down a little. I did. Al, can you uh, drop out the links for for them? So someone asked me specifically if you could do this tool with one hand, so let's try it. I'm going to put that there and see if I can do it with one hand. You can. It's a little bit harder. But yes. I believe you can. I think the trick would be to hold the mesh steady and move the tool forward. Okay, so I wanted to test that out today before I said yay or nay. I don't want you to get something you can't use. Okay, so we'll tie it, spread it out. So one has to go over the other. If it's wanting to pop up, just stick your hands under and kind of hit that little bubble to go this way. 
like that. So what I do before I put these in is I'm going to kind of pull it like this. I want to go ahead and get that little crease in my ribbon. That's going to help keep them coming forward like I want them to. And then pull it, pull it, and so I am alternating. So I want to see both ribbons, right? So I'll put one here, one here, one here, and just alternate them. This looks a little bit strange right now, but when you get the second one on, uh, we sell these wire cutters in the store. They're the bomb. I'm just going to tell you, they're the bomb. It's a 14-inch frame from the dog tree. Hello, Carol. Okay. And I'm also checking to make sure my truck is going in the right direction when I'm putting it on. I did attach the chenille stems to the frame. Yes, I did. Yeah. Wire pretty much has memory unless you move it to a new place. So I will use that to help me. Yeah, you could attach the tool to your work table. So one of the reasons that we made it lightweight and very small is so it wouldn't take up a lot of space. But yeah, you could attach it to your workspace like this and keep it steady and then you could just pull the mesh back for sure you bought the blue wire cutter because it was shiny oh my gosh you cracked me up <laughs> but it's awesome it's an awesome wire cutter so y'all my first <laughs> first ever wreath retreat we did we got these special cutters and they were horrible horrible and so i learned my lesson and i started researching and looking around until i found a good wire cutter because i wasn't going to have that problem again it was terrible we had to like take one really good one and walk around to everybody so that did not work out very well <sighs> Oh, see, you sell mostly pancake grease. Awesome. I love it. I bet Melly Mel loves that. So, one thing you can do if you're using the tool is push the tool with your thumb, and then you're just kind of using your hands to keep it straight. That way, you're not having to use your fingers and things like that. You're just using your thumb. <clears throat> I'll tell you what's funny. I've been <laughs> playing around with this tool and thinking of how to design it for a long time. <laughs> years. It's been years. I just needed the right equipment. So I was excited when we finally figured it out. Okay. See how this one kind of wants to there. So I'll just come back over and use that wire to just kind of crimp it a little bit. Ooh, graduation day, that's exciting. Right, this cutters are fabulous. Oh, thank you for stars. Okay, so bend it. It's funny because I told my other designing gals about this years ago when we met. I bet they still remember it. That's funny. So don't forget to go check out 
Melissa and Doreen today because they will have videos as well. So Burlap Boutique and Door Designs. Hi, how are you? Did I ask you to get something? Hmm, I can't remember. If you forgot, I certainly forgot. <laughs> yes, you wanna see the sign? Hold on one second. I will pull it up. Okay. That's the side. There we go. It's so weird when I'm doing this because it's always backwards of the way I think I need to go. <laughs> so if you see me go the wrong way a lot, that's fine because it's a mirrored image. So you can read the words. <laughs> it's funny. Awesome. You're going to have your stuff to play with again. Okay, so we'll get started on the top. So I'm just going to go up to the top, put it down. You see how it goes in between the two we made on the bottom. We're going to do the exact same method, just like that. See how we spread it out? Now this up here, I think is where you can see the bubbling effect a little bit better. So just stick your hand under and pop those bubbles up so that it will lay down. Like that. It almost kind of looks like a flower petals. Doing well, how are you? Are you making a lemon wreath? <laughs> oh, I love the cutters, they're so awesome. And I will tell you, so my original cutters, let's see, where are they? These are the Nipex cutters. These things cost me like $45, okay? And they're great. These cost like, I don't remember what they are, like 15. They work even better than that Nipex. So, <laughs> yeah. I'll just put those Nipex away. Plus, it's prettier. It's much prettier. Like Susan said, it's shiny. <laughs> it's very shiny. And we like shiny, sparkly stuff, right? Okay. There we go. So we got those two on. Me too, and I like that it's very simple. Sometimes simple wreaths are just the bomb. So up top, we are not going to have anything on top of this because we used this thicker mesh you're not going to need another layer if you use if you use something thinner you might have to put a second layer on the top in order to cover the frame but with this kind of mesh you really don't have to the 12 works fine. on top we're going to spread out our ribbons with just a tiny little bit of fluff in them. So the kind of the rule of thumb with this is to get an empty toilet paper roll and that's about the height or the difference between the door and a storm door. That way you'll kind of be able to check. Oh, awesome. Right. 
There we go. Spread out our ribbons because we like to see them. I tend to still go in that same direction. So there's really not an opening here because the whole thing's flat. So it kind of just works out fine doing it like that. You know, that autocorrect thing just kills you, doesn't it? Drives me insane. <laughs> Especially if you put in like wreaths or mesh, it comes out like wreath or mash. <laughs> oh, that kills me. So, yep, we all get the autocorrect issue. Yeah, you had to do the two layers with your mesh because you had thin mesh. That's why I specifically used this one today because it is a thicker mesh. So you can get away with one layer on the top. You would still be able to do the entire wreath with one mesh, right? Because we did 20 inches. You can actually get um, 18 20 inch pieces out of your roll of mesh. We try really hard to get everything out next day, except of course on the weekend. And then it's really just kind of Monday. <laughs> we try. Yes, we love shiny. I love turquoise too. Turquoise and purple. You can't get two wreaths out of one roll, but you could get one and a half. If you use the right kind of mesh, you could get one and a half. So for every, you know, you would have two rolls could get you three wreaths. Not bad. Whereas normally two rolls will get you one wreath, right? That's not a bad situation. Right. Pretty close. So we did 12, which means there would be six left. So you would just need the other six. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad we get them out. And I think everyone, knock on wood, seems to be trained now so that we're not making errors. It's really hard when we first get new people. Yeah, it's just tough. But I think everybody's been here long enough now. That's going well. At least they're not telling me about the errors, so. Although, if we do make an error, we always make it right. Mighty. Isn't that cute? I love the black and white kind of against the, the yellow and white. If you didn't want this kind of look, you could also do yellow or yellow and white. The mesh is cut at 20 inches. I'll tell you, so I have fibromyalgia, and sometimes when I've made several wreaths in a row, my hands will start hurting. That's why I wanted to create tool because I struggle sometimes with my hands. And let's face it, I make a living with my hands. So yeah, that's a problem. So if you're wondering why I made this tool, that's why. I 
had to send all my drawings and everything in for my patent. Holy cow! I can't even tell you how complicated it is to get a patent. <laughs> I've never answered so many questions in all my life. And they ask that this typical government style, they ask you the same question, but in like three or four different ways, but it's the same question. <laughs> I'm thinking, didn't I just answer this? Yep, same question, just worded differently. <laughs> I'm thinking, okay. I don't know. Refer to question so-and-so. <laughs> but, yeah. They didn't, uh, they didn't have that option. Oh, well. It's okay. Yeah, I have a really good crew right now. Looks like I cut one too many. I didn't miss one, did I? Nope. Right. I cut one ribbon too many, but that's okay. So you could, um, it is wood, so you could glue a clip right onto it and then clip it on. I think all of my clips are out in the other room. Are they? Yeah, I'll have to bring the clip in here. But yeah, you could just glue the clip on and then clip it on. So. Yep. You had a box damaged. Yeah, definitely, if you have something that's damaged, I know bureaucracy, right? Take pictures so that when you um, send it to us, we can take it up with our carriers. Because they always want proof. Okay, well, we need a picture. I want you to see how flat this is. Okay, first look. Can you see through anything? Let's open up. Can you see through anything? Can you see the frame? Look how flat that is. Let's see. Do we have, yes. Okay, just for comparison, you're okay, baby. This is what we usually do with two mesh, right? Okay, see that? Now look at that. Let's flip it around this way. Can you see the difference? So you can see this would fit pretty much anywhere. You can't have to go see. One of the girls just left, so Bella has to go see because the door shut. <laughs> All right, so it's super thin, and it's really cute. And then you can either put the sign in the middle, or you could put the sign over on the side. That part's up to you. And we'll make a bow, but remember, the whole point of this one is to keep it pretty flat. So if someone was going to use this and put it on their door, I would make a separate bow and encourage them to put it on their mailbox or on their porch, you know, on their railing or something like that. Okay. So let's do our sign. You know, these are also really good for, um, like, people who are in assisted living and things like that, they don't generally have that big a door and you want something super lightweight. So these would work really well. And give me a second, I'll tell you how big it is. Okay. It is right at about 20 about 22 inches so you could probably put it in a 20 inch box and then of course the great thing about this is this is going to ship pretty inexpensive because you could cut the box down 
to what the, you know, to like kind of lay on the, what would I charge? So we have one mesh, two ribbons. You would want to charge for the entire roll of mesh, right? You would want to multiply it by two, all of your cost, and I would add 20% for your time. So probably, let's see, maybe 70, probably like 65 or 70. And then I would upcharge for the bow. Ah, uh, yeah. The mesh is um, 10 inch. It might say 10.25 because they're using some uh, new suppliers. But it's still 10 inches. It might be just slightly bigger than 10 inches. Yeah, you gotta allow for shipping. So all that is part of your cost. So if I were to add the shipping in, then I'd probably add another $20. Where's, oh, I must have put it up. Okay. So someone said something about cheater bows. You could also do the cheater bows on this. So like if you didn't want to do a bow, hi mama. Right, I would do like, oh, let's do like 12 inches. Little 12 inch piece, right? We're gonna kind of overlap them about an inch or so. Push it down, pinch it in the middle, just like this. You could also do the lemon if you'd rather. Then we can just open this little back up. I wouldn't do it on the bottom because you're just really not gonna be able to see it. But on the top, you could even do, oh, let's try this. So let's put this down. Okay, tie that back off. Okay, get our little bow there. There we go. So now you have a little bow. You could do your lemon one. Okay, so I did a very small one. You could do it bigger. But remember, you still want to keep it so that it's not going to pop up above a door. Okay. How cute, the little truck. Okay, so we pinch it. With this one, you might want to go a little bit bigger. I still did the 12 inches, but might be good to do a little bit larger. turn it the way that the ribbon is turned and pull these tails out like that that's cute let's do another one of those let's make it a little bit bigger let's do like 14 okay. so see how I just overlap it like an inch Yeah, I think that's a good size right there. These are not Mama's favorite wreaths. <laughs> Bye, Linda. She's just, she doesn't like the, that it's flat. <laughs> she likes them really fluffy. There we go. That's really cute. I like that. Look how cute that is. Let's do another one of these. So I'm not going to do every one because we have to put our sign on. So I want to leave a space to put our sign on. So we'll put our sign on here. Okay. Okay. 
Your cheater bows were 14? Yeah. I think 12 is good for the little ones, for the one and a half inch, but. When I cut these ties off, I always cut and leave an inch or so in case I need to go back in, because sometimes I do. There we go. Okay. All right, so now we can put our sign in. Put our sign in right here. Okay. Gonna use our little weaving tool. Put that in. Right down. Through the mesh. Same exact thing we always do. I usually tie it like in the middle ring, the middle little piece. Because it's kind of in, and so I won't have to worry about it scratching the door. Bye! Yeah. Yeah, the size of the sign is 8 inches. Now, it comes in 10 and 12. I just thought an 8 inch would be really good on this one. Okay. See how it's just kind of laying flat on here. So we don't want it to smash anything. And you can see on the bottom, all I'm doing is running it around that little piece right there. So you can see right here is where I tied it. Okay. There we go. That's so cute. All right, let's make a bow to match. We like bows to match. All right. I am so notoriously bad about having this on the wrong side. I don't know why I do that. <laughs> Not paying attention. All right, so we're gonna fold it over, cut at an angle. All right, let's do like, let's do like a 10 inch tail. So remember what we usually use on a wreath is we usually use 18 pieces of ribbon, especially if we're only using two. But on this one, we only have to do 12. So, it saves on ribbon too. Now I want you to see, already I need to fix this one because it is facing this direction and I want it to face down like the ribbon, like the ribbon tails. So I'm gonna just take it and just flip it over. You can go either way, so it doesn't really matter which way you go. You just wanna grab it at the base and flip it over, okay? We'll have to do this one as well. I know, I love lemons. They're so pretty. I got that gorgeous yellow coloring and they're just cheerful. Okay. Get our little dovetail, get that nice little detail. Flip our ribbon. You want to flip it right at where it is in the bow maker. If you're doing it in your hand, you don't need to flip it. So I'll show you that. Let's put this one in and then I'll show you how to do that. Okay. Thank you. 
Okay, so six inch, six inch. Don't need to flip that last piece because you're just coming straight out. All right, let me show you how to do this part by hand. Oh, awesome. I love these bow makers. Okay, so cut it at an angle. You're just going to take your tail, get a pinch where your tail is. I like to put it in between my thumb and my finger because remember, my, my hands tend to hurt if I try to hold it like this. Then I'm going to start getting some pains in here. If you need to hold it this way, totally fine. I just put it in between here because it doesn't hurt. You can take your ribbon and go from 12 to 0 right on your mat, pull it. I just push it in my hands like this. Here, let me turn it around this way so you can see better. I push it in my hands like that, okay? So the ribbon is in a good place. Here's the trick. You're not going to twist the ribbon when it gets in your hand. You're just gonna go to the other side See, this is normally where you would twist it so the pretty side's up, but you're not gonna do that. You're actually just gonna take the ribbon and you're gonna pull it across like this. Stick it in your hand, push it in your hand. And then you can use your ribbons to kind of pull them up and make sure they're the same size. And then, let me just turn it off. Like that. We can put it in the bow maker like that and then we didn't have to twist it see how it's going the same way I wanted to bring that lemon back up because we want to see that lemon it's so pretty so on this frame we only did 12 ties as opposed to the normal 18 Sometimes you have to do, with this method, you have to do more, but you don't have to make new, um, you don't have to put new pieces on there. You would just go right back in on top of the one that you did on the top. Okay, just going to slide our zip tie under here. We're just going to get it started. And then all we're gonna do is pull it out. Once that zip tie is started, it's not gonna come apart. Then make sure we're in our groove. Okay. I normally like to double check that middle one. Throw some lemons in your order. I know I like lemons. I know we're working on some um, little lemons like small lemons that you can paint to put in your um, wreaths. I'm pretty excited. Okay, like little slices, little slices like these look. All right, so pull it really tight. Could you use the ruffle tool to hold? Yes. That's a pretty good idea, Andrea. <laughs> we'll try it, hold on. Okay, so pull back and forth, back and forth. All right, so you're breaking the bow. All you're doing is getting it out of that where it's stuck in the center from the zip tie. Because I like mine to be really fluffy and pretty and so I have to kind of pull it out and make sure that ribbon knows that I'm the boss and it's not. There we go. So we got our bow. Depending on the screen door, it's possible you could fit this bow on as well. I think that's cute. That's so cute. Look at that. That's cute with that bow on. I still don't think it's gonna be quite big enough. I mean, I don't think it'll affect it, but 
I don't know. All right, let's try and see if this will hold it while we're doing. Okay, so we do eight inches. Place it in here. And then we'll make our loop, put it in, push it down. Uh, yeah, that's going to work. Okay. All right. Again, just push it down. You can still pull them up to see if they match. So you can do your patterned ribbon with the tool instead of putting it in between your hand because then it's not going to hurt at all. Pull it out. There it is. So yes, the answer is yes, you can. I didn't even think of that. I was pretty smart. They fit with the, oh, okay, good. They fit with the bow. She does it all the time. Awesome. So let's add the bow on. I think I might just put it right here. So we right across. All right. We're actually going to use our weaving needle. I don't think I've ever shown you how to do this with the pipe cleaner. So the exact same way. I'm just going to push right down through the mesh because it's just really too hard because there is no going around it. So we just use the exact same tool. It's just that we're going to use it twice. All right. So again, because of the way this mesh just covers the whole thing. There we go. Now I have it on the underside, see? And I'll just tie it on. Thank you. Oh, I love quiche. I don't think I've ever had asparagus soup. I like that, what is it, butternut squash soup? Yum. That stuff is the bomb. I'm not even a vegetable person, but I like it. <laughs> okay. All right. There it is. So you can see how flat it is, even with the bow. See that side? So it's great for people that either need a lightweight wreath or they have a storm door. Pretty snazzy. All right, so let me put it up close so you can see that sign again. This is one of my very favorite signs that we have here. There's the bow and there's the sign. See, look, here's the loop that we made in the little tool. Looks the same as the one we did in our hand. So yes, if you have trouble with your hand and you have to do the one where you don't want to twist it, you can use this. Cauliflower cheddar, that sounds good. Y'all are just making me hungry. <laughs> now I'm getting hungry. Awesome, thank you. I hope y'all have an awesome night and um, I'll probably I know for sure it'll either be, um, I'll either be on or Tori or Casey will be on tomorrow. We're trying to get Tori used to doing lives. She's really doing very well. So we're working her in just a little at a time. <laughs> oh, awesome. Well, I hope y'all have a wonderful night and I will see you guys probably tomorrow. I think we will have, um, so I got the patent in on this today. So hopefully this will be listed tomorrow and then I can show y'all kind of more how it works, but I'll show you that tomorrow. All right. Y'all have a great night.
Bye, y'all. Thanks for joining me.